If you aren't familiar with Patreon, it's an easy way for those interested in my work to see new exclusive content and updates before anyone else. By contributing as little as $1 per month, patrons will enable me to dedicate more of my time to creating by helping cover the many costs incurred for my work. You have access to a Discord chat, and you can chat directly with me at any time, among other things. Don't forget to check it out. Recently, I was playing with my friends in front of my house. We were just goofing around and hanging out. We always play after school in front of my house, but we live all close to each other. It's a nice neighborhood, safe when we usually stay till dark just before dinner time. But this one day, we were playing with the soccer ball and I accidentally kicked the ball too far and it went to the front yard of another house. Right in front of the living room window, now, we know that this house doesn't have anyone living in it, but Sam, when he ran to get the ball, he stood in front of the living room window and he froze right in front of it. He was scared with something and so he ran back to us and told us what he saw. He said that just when he reached the ball and stood in front of the window, he looked inside and someone was staring back at him. In his own description, to be more specific, it was a kid, our age approximately, but his skin was grayish pale and his face looked deformed. Me and Jack looked at each other and smiled. We thought Sam was just messing around and we told him, sure, sure Sam, a creepy kid lives in that house alone. We laughed a little more and went to our houses. The next day came and after school we met in front of my house in the street, but this time only Jack appeared. For some reason Sam wasn't there. That wasn't usual because we meet every day after school to play. We tried to let it go and played ourselves. That night I heard someone speaking with my mother in the living room, but it sounded like a woman crying. I approached and peeked from the corner and saw Sam's mother sitting on my couch, crying. My mother was at her side trying to comfort her. I felt worried. Maybe something happened to Sam. That's why he didn't appear in the afternoon. Anyway, I was awake all night thinking about it. In the next day I spoke with Jack about what happened. Sam was missing, I was sure, and maybe what he said about that kid he saw in that house was true. I told Jack I wanted to check that house before it got dark. Maybe Sam could be there. Jack wasn't very happy with the idea of going there, but he agreed. We arrived in the same spot where Sam went to pick up the ball and we stood there, looking at the window, waiting for something to happen. I couldn't see nothing, there was no one there, at least right now. As I prepared to leave, I looked at Jack and he was looking in front of him, but he looked tense and afraid, but paralyzed. I placed my hand on his shoulder and he screamed and started running. I got startled, but I tried to follow Jack. Luckily, he stopped running when he reached my house. I asked him what the heck was going on. The only words that came out of his mouth were, I saw him. He looked in shock and was breathing heavily, but he kept repeating the same words. He said nothing else. It was getting dark so we went back to our homes, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. I think Jack saw that same kid that Sam saw just before disappearing. If that was the case, I feared for Jack's fate, but hope it wasn't related. Morning came, I looked at the alarm clock. 9am. Because it was Saturday and we don't have school, I went immediately to Jack's house. As I got closer to the house, I saw the police car in front of the house. My heart dropped when I saw it. I immediately thought about what Jack and Sam told me. The kid they saw must have had something to do with this. It had to! I decided to see it for myself, for my friends, for my own sake. Even if I wanted to tell someone I had no evidence or anything to show, I had to do this myself. I went to the house where they saw this kid. Again, I got close to the window and stood there, watching and waiting. Nothing was happening. I decided to go inside. Maybe they were there. The main door wasn't locked, so I just opened and entered. Inside, just an empty space. Nothing in the floors or walls. All normal. I explored a little bit more and found a door to the basement. I walked down the stairs. When I reached the bottom, I look around, but also, the basement was empty and it looked normal as well. It had two small windows, so it had some light from the outside. It wasn't very dark, but there was something very weird about it. I had this feeling, I don't really know how to explain it. 
But it was like I could hear voices. I felt there were things around me in that basement, but there was nothing there. That was until I was struck with visions that came and go. Flashes of something in there, but in a different place, like a parallel world. The worst part was Sam and Jack were there, inside a cocoon of bloody guts. This world was blood red and it looked like something from a horror movie. My friends trapped there. The visions got stronger and my legs got weaker as they came, more and more. A few more seconds have passed and behind my friends I saw a shadow that slowly became clear. It was a kid with a deformed face and grayish skin. He looked like a kid but he looked old at the same time. It was the kid Jack and Sam told me about. I was frozen looking at him. He had saw me and somehow he had to go into this world. I feared I was next. As I keep looking at him, slowly from behind him, a shadow starts appearing, like it was possessing that body. It's laughing manically at me and then it launches itself at me. All goes black. I wake up in my bed. I look at the alarm clock. It's 9am, Saturday morning.